So recording has started. This is office hours for September 28th, Jenkins documentation. Uh, let's take a look at the agenda first. Jonathan, thanks so much for your marvelous preparation for it. Uh, Wiki conversion progress summary, top item. Uh, this is gonna be a great topic to discuss. And then I've got a brief topic on terminology updates with proposal for how we approach it. So anything else that should be on the agenda? Uh, Mark just wanted to uh, like verify uh, Hectoberfest uh, participation. Can we participate before uh, 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 September 30th or just on September 30th we need to join? Uh, ah, so to... good question. So what are, let's put it as what are the rules, rules and how do they apply, right? So that's, that's a good question. So let's put that in on the, the, the question list, Vlad, and we'll get to it. Good, okay. Any other topics? Okay, let's take those then. So let's look at, at Wiki Conversion Progress Summary. Jonathan, you want to take us through it? No, okay. Let's move on. Uh, well, uh, I guess uh, we have finished the uh, work migration uh, issues register, okay? So in the summary, uh, most of the issues uh, from spreadsheets were uh, registered as a issue GitHub. So it's uh, near about the 100 issues there, I guess, 100, maybe 40, I don't remember. Yeah, 50, 57. So now we have a lot of issues to work on. Uh, just uh, about the 31 issues, I can figure out the destination page. So I, I put a link to to map them. Uh, so maybe uh, uh, someday you can help me to figure out. And so these are these oh, are flagged the, as waiting. Yeah, waiting is triage and issue. Okay, so waiting. It is a red set, the field. Oh, it is. I, uh, okay. Can... Okay, so so the filter. On, on, on the state a status column, it is saying waiting ah. triage and issue. Yeah. Got right. it. Okay, all right. So some issues are, are really old and I can't figure out the destination. Are the issues uh, uh, show the broken link to plugins, for example? Mm -hmm. so, so, for example, the uh, one, line 130, uh, all, all swap uh, dependency check plugin. If you visit the page, the link is to plugins broken, and I, I can't find them on the plugin re research page. Plugin. Okay. Page. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, so let's, shall we take a look at that one? Just, I'm curious because OWASP is is very much used, but I don't know if this, this particular plugin may be a dead plugin that they've removed and replaced with something else. Maybe. Okay, so you say that this link is just broken? No, there's OWASP. What? Yeah. Well, I swear, it was broken yesterday. <laughs> Well, well, and, and it, it may be that the plugin site was having some issues. So, so this looks like it's a redirect. Um, is the mm. and looks like the content is largely there. Good. Okay. Let's double check. Maybe they've already implemented documentation as code. Uh, organization. Where's the URL? Okay. Maybe another page is keep it broken or not, I, I can visit them again. Yeah, and they, they, definitely, they definitely have made the transition to yeah. documentation as code. So this is a redirect, nice, okay, good. Okay, so uh, let's back to agenda, please. All right, okay. So the next topic, we have uh, 
and the list below shows uh, I, I put the link there. So we have 39 uh, issues eligible to go to first issue. So I, I put the link for all of them. Excellent. And I've started through this list assigning the good first issue, first issue label. I'm doing my exactly. own my own triage checks as I've gone through. So I'm I'm right now I think I've completed the first five and I'll continue working on those later today. Exactly. So there is a lot of issues to work on on Oktoberfest. Mm -hmm. uh, um, well, let's move to the next topic to show what it is. Okay, so... And, uh, okay, here is the difference now between the when we start to register on 10 Octo uh, August. And now, uh, yesterday, I, I put uh, another graph. So now we have 30% uh, of work done and uh, almost uh, 40 uh, available issues to work on. And then uh, we can uh, start another, follow another strategy to work with documentation. Excellent. So, so the Describe again for me the distinctions that we're seeing between these two graphs. So in the old case, there was waiting for an issue that was almost two thirds of the, of the, the things that, that large yellow two thirds. Yeah. And that has now been reduced to just less than 15%. Exactly. And uh, in, at the beginning, uh, all issues was mapped, but uh, don't receive trash. So uh, no one can help us. But now we have uh, the issues uh, in the first triage and register to another volunteers work with us. Excellent. This is this is really exceptional, Jonathan. Thank you very very much for what you've done. This That's is okay. marvelous. Okay. So then then this is a place where. Any anyone else, so me or Vlad or Meg could consider working through these lists that you've already assigned, that you've already identified as good first issue, do another triage, yep, ready for the good first issue label. I'll work through them. Others are welcome to assist if they'd like. That's really great. This is brilliant. Okay. So so this feels like a great, a great thing for us to highlight if we were to do a, a Jenkins online meetup fairly early in October to highlight how people can contribute to Jenkins documentation during Hacktoberfest. We could show, hey, look, here are the things that are ready for you. All sorts of great things that are here. We guess we've got some few left that we need to triage still, but we have a hundred and it's 157, right? Wasn't it? That, exactly. That's, that's really marvelous. And now if I look at ones that we've already got labeled good first issue, this is not having processed all 49 of the ones that you had identified. So this only includes five of those. Therefore, we'll add another 40 or more to this list of good first issues. Yeah. And uh, it's a, uh, uh, all the, uh, 49 issues, it's about redirect operations, but mm -hmm. it's a, a good start for newcomers. And, and so we, a, right, we need that work done. We, we, it's work to do. It's a valid pull request. Exactly. And the people is, uh, become happy when uh, they help. So it's a, a simple quest issue. It's a simple problem to solve, but uh, they can taste the uh, how it's valuable will help others and community. Right. Oh, that's, that is really exceptional. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Anything else you want to highlight there? Any other, any other things we should be aware? No, uh, just uh, be aware to uh, revisit the, all the 49 issues, maybe is like some uh, exceptional content or or uh, modificate uh, modify the text as you wish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and just just to give a, my my 
my technique is I work through the triage process. So I opened this one and said, ah, oh, okay, I'm gonna, gonna change the description. Oh no, this one, this one I checked and it's already done. So I, when I click this link, it opens up to the same page that this one does. So the redirect, I assume you or somebody else has implemented. So I just closed the issue, very nicely done. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, a, a let, let's uh, take the number here. Someone uh, sent me a mail. Uh, oh yes, Zbinek Zbinek Konechny in uh, I believe is in Croatia. Yeah, I, I can't. Uh, I, I don't know how to say the, her, her, his name, but uh, it's, uh, it's speaking about a plugin uh, he was working on. Uh, so. He already sent the pull request to redirect them. Excellent. Yeah, that, and that is, what a great outcome. That is a marvelous result. All right, thank you, thank you. And the, now the Spinak had also, had also pointed to the See, there, there is a GitHub issue, isn't there, that tracks, tracks some of these things as a, in a different way. So, so that's, we've got additional opportunities for people to help there, where even if it didn't reach yet into our list of pages to migrate, there are still plenty of plugins that need documentation migrated to GitHub from wherever. Mm, nice. So, so you, saw, you say to... to write the readme.md file from plugins yeah, or about basically, tutorials. Okay. Yeah, no, these are just these are just plugin documentation as readme.md or readme.adoc. Yeah. Well, but uh, how exactly works the uh, the plugin monetization? For example, uh, the volunteer who wrote the plugin uh, is responsible to documentation or not? The community need to stay there documenting everything? Uh, actually, it's it's either. So that's a good topic. How about, let me put that one at the, towards the end of our session here, plug-in documentation transition, because we may want to, may want to include that in the um, October meetup, in the October Jenkins online meetup. To remind people just how easy it is and how they can help. Anything else on on our on the marvelous progress you've made on Wiki conversion? <laughs> no, I guess uh, we we said. Uh, we speak about everything. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, You're that welcome. is that is an amazing piece of work. Great work. So I've got a concept on the next topic for terminology updates. So terminology updates. This is the conversion from master to controller. Um, slave agent, blacklist to deny list, or a better phrasing. Oftentimes, we don't need to use deny list. We just need to say what we're, what we're blocking. And whitelist to allow list, or a better phrasing. So what I did was I looked at I looked for the word master in the, in the Jenkins.io repository and realized there are some references in the style guide and in contributing that we need to be sure that those instructions are ready before we point people to them. Likewise, there are sensitive documents like in the roadmap where there are references that we may need to, we may need to also correct those. We want to be sure that it's using correct terminology there, but those are not good first time issues and they're not places where we would want somebody who's inexperienced 
coming in to, to, to do make a change. But then there are some spots that would be good for a first time contributor. The multi-branch pipeline project tutorial was high on the count of places where you use the word master. Likewise, creating a pipeline in blue ocean and the and two architecting pages, and then a, a number of pipeline pages. So my thought was each of these bullets would be a bug, an issue in GitHub, and then I'll list the, pro the file that they're to edit to, to, to make that change. This one had, I think it was on the order of 10 references. And so it's, it's enough of a change that it's not a trivial operation. It's not changing one word. And this one, I think likewise. So now to, to the rest of you as a group, does that seem like a reasonable approach to attack this without uh, to attack this, how do we do the terminology changes? So, so basically, uh, you're speaking, uh, it's not a just uh, find and replace. It's more, it's more than that. It, as far as I can tell, it is more than that because there are times, for instance, one of the things when I did my initial search, oops, when I did my initial search, I just looked for the word master. And of course, the word master occurs in a GitHub repository URL that refers to the master branch. And if they do a find and replace on that, they will break the hyperlink completely. Mm, okay. uh, I, I heard about a news I uh, speak in uh, GitHub in the next days we will uh, change the master technology to, to main. Uh, and and, and I look forward to that change, but I suspect they won't take the, they won't do the very dangerous and risky thing of altering existing repositories. Mm, and if yeah. they did, I would be outraged. So, so if, if they did, I would immediately go change it back. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> because there are just too many hyperlinks that depend on that, that word master. So, yeah. so but and I could I, see them saying that for new repositories, for new repositories, instead of master, it will be main. Yeah, or ease some transition. Great, good for them. But, but this is a place where, if we yeah, it's very delicate. Right. If we do wholesale replacement, we will spend more time. If we do mechanical replacement without thinking, we will spend more time for reviewers to fix problems than we gained by having people help us. Actually, it's a good point. I need to be sure that we teach them. And Jonathan, you were the good, the good example of this. The issue needs to clearly state that the, they must not break existing hyperlinks. Right? It's just not, not, not acceptable. We can't, we can't do that. We will throw. We will discard pull requests if they, if they do a wholesale search and replace without thinking, because it will probably break hyperlinks. Yeah, maybe uh, it's a, a, a nice approach. Just uh, uh, register the issues and uh, wrote some, write something uh, warning about the danger of a change uh, URLs and uh, so. Uh, do a, a nice uh, PR review after. So mm -hmm. reject if you find something wrong or just ask for adjustment. Um, right. We need to try, maybe a member can uh, do everything uh, in the good hand, with the good hand, and just do the good work. Good. Yeah, actually, with, with those of you who are, oh, I didn't mean to touch that. Would those of you in this meeting be willing to review a draft of that of that issue? <coughs> Sorry. Be willing to review a draft of that issue, uh, proposing what the text should be. to propose draft 
issue text, send to others for review. Glad Jonathan Egg to review text. text. Yeah, and uh, I guess you are absolutely right, uh, Mark, that it should not be mechanical or uh, automated in any way because uh, there is, we need to say there is distinction between updating documentation or terminology inside documentation and inside the code. So probably we should make a note somewhere saying that all the documentation is changed, the new terminology, the code is Right. More complex effort. More complex right. Effort. Yeah. Well, and and there, it's it's a point of conflict that was noted earlier. There are times when the the documentation is describing the current text in the UI, and so the first challenge then is we need to go fix the current text in the UI. Um, and then we can change the documentation. We don't want to confuse users by presenting documentation of something that hasn't yet changed in the actual UI. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Just go ahead, Vlad. To add, besides UI, when we are referring to, uh, let's say, um, Docker uh, images, sometimes we're referring to them. They are named still, some images are named with mm. all terminology. Um, so it may be not necessarily related to UI, but you are right, UI may be predominant, like right. when it happens. That's, uh, that's a very good point. That's one that inside a tutorial for instance if we name if we name the volume jenkins master volume that we can probably safely change but if they if there's a risk that they persisted that volume and kept it for long term then i i suspect we have to warn them then hey this used to be named this because they may have to do a transition for themselves if they had that volume they created a year ago and they're still using it. And now we've changed the instructions. Yeah, good insight. Okay. Any other comments or concerns on terminology updates? Okay, next topic, Hacktoberfest. So Vlad, you had asked, uh, can we can we begin Hacktoberfest contrib contributions before 1 October? I, I think that was your question, Vlad. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. Should we wait for October 1st or it's... Uh, yeah, and so after. contributions prior to October 1, do not count towards the Hacktoberfest criteria. So there, they require um, they re DigitalOcean mm -hmm. only considers October one through October thirty one. Mm -hmm. Now that doesn't stop us from preparing, mm -hmm. but but they they will they will count so four pull requests from between one October and thirty one October. Mm -hmm. Now, did that answer your question? Yes, absolutely, uh, Mark. And related to this one about uh, specifically registration for digital ocean, a digital ocean. Uh, mm -hmm. It's when the uh, digital ocean, they mentioned this Oktoberfest, it's not clear enough. Should we do registration after Oct uh, September 31st, starting from October 1, 
or we can register with DigitalOcean uh, before. And that's, that's another good question. I thought that their rules allowed us to register before. Let's find out. Yeah, because maybe some people already registered had been before. Should they re-register or use another? Right, and, and I thought, let's see. So let's take a look here. Welcome. Okay, to get a shirt, you must make four pull requests between October 1 and 31 in any time zone, okay? To any public repo so that we qualify. And now, um, let's see, now where was the maybe registration? For, maybe in the same article, maybe search for registration. Ah, here it is. So it was, I think it is, we just click the start hacking. It will then ask me, okay, who am I logging in as? I am a maintainer in the US. I have read and understood the rules and values. Oh yes, I know those rules and values, good, okay. I don't mind receiving updates from both. Okay, so it looks like it's allowing me to register now. So I would assume that they'll preserve that registration. Mm -hmm. Good, good. And we've got, so they've got a facility now to help us promote. We've got to submit our request for a, an online meetup to, to the Jenkins advocacy team. Mm -hmm. That's one I should put on this list. But sorry that I missed getting that into the agenda. Oktoberfest meetup scheduling. So was there more that you wanted to address on this topic, Vlad, on Hacktoberfest and contribution schedule? No, actually, Mark, you completely answered my questions and thank you very much for clarifying all this. Yes. Great. Okay, so we've got, and, and I hadn't seen this login thing, so that's, that's really great. That's exceptional. And they've got a, a counter. That'll be fun to watch. That's nice. I'm, I'm not sure how they know that I've done pull requests to arbitrary public repository. That's great. Okay. So does it mean that after four pull requests, everybody can stop doing pull requests? Or <laughs> well, after four pull requests, you qualify. I will think of the same. <laughs> I, I don't. I, th I think a pull request to a public repository, at least for me, was almost infectious. It was so, so fun. It was, oh, wow, I just contributed something to somebody because I felt like doing it. And I, I, I got addicted to it and couldn't stop. And I think we hope the same thing for other people, that they'll just, just become attached to the idea that they should help open source projects. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Well, there is also possibility, for instance, for somebody creating their own repository, not connected or related to any common project or Jenkins or whatever. And sure. they can uh, create different branches inside those repository and create pull requests on their own and merge. Sure. And, and, if, you, and if you're that sophisticated and you don't want to contribute to open source, I think you probably deserve a t-shirt. Congratulations, you, you, you've shown a level of sophistication that's far beyond. <laughs> uh, 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 did you know, uh, uh, do you know, uh, they will send, send the issue by, by post us or yeah. just, uh, yeah? Yes, oh. yes, as far as I understand, they will mail the, they mail the shirt by post. Oh, nice. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's why that's why it's been so crucial to them that they've 
got it presented by DigitalOcean and Intel and Dev. So they've got DigitalOcean as a, a, a hosting sponsor and Intel, the processor giant. And I assume it's very expensive for them to do this, but we're very grateful that they do. Yeah, really expensive because uh, just uh, four PRs uh, so simple to do. So maybe everyone in the world get a shirt. <laughs> right. Well, and I think they may have set an upper bound on how many shirts they're willing to deliver, but but it was a very large number, if I recall correctly, I'm thinking a hundred thousand or something. So at least I, if I recall past years, they had set some upper bound. So that so that everybody in the world did not get a T-shirt, but that this is it's a very positive thing, absolutely. All right. So since we covered that one, I've got one more topic here: Hacktoberfest meetup proposal. So Mark to submit to draft a proposal. for early October, and I say early October, it would be after October 8, because that's when CDCon ends. End of the end of CDCon. The idea was we'll have uh, Mark, Glad Jonathan present how to contribute to Jenkins stocks. Meg, do you want to be in on that presentation? Well, I, I don't know uh, if my English is uh, good enough for a large presentation. Oh, so, I think I think your English is marvelous, and I think we should have you show some, at least show the graphs and the charts and the, the data that we've got. Yeah, you show how to create documentation and send some PRs, something like that? Uh, no, I was thinking we will have you actually show how our process worked with these things. Because I think this is, is interesting and fun for people to know. I can do the part about, hey, this is how you do a, a pull request for documentation. Here's the demonstration. But I think it would be really great to have slides that say, look, contributing, I, I'm Jonathan. I contributed to open source by helping prepare for this event. And here are the things that I prepared. No, I, just uh, like a, a six case of four. Yes. Yes, that's what I was thinking anyway, is you, you would say, look, this is what I did, not a demonstration, just I contributed by preparing these issues, by reviewing them, by thinking about them, and that's a, a, a valid and helpful way to contribute to open source. Okay, so uh, if I wrote a, a, write a proposal, I need to send before 8 October. Uh, it's the time uh, less opportunity to send a proposal. So what we will do is I will send, I, I will send, let's outline this. So Mark will send a draft today or tomorrow to Jenkins Advocacy, an outline. So an outline. And that will propose, Mark, how to, let's see, no, let's do it this way. Mark, intro, uh, Jonathan, preparing the issues for Hacktoberfest. And then maybe we have Vlad, Uh, creating a redirect or something else, Vlad, you tell me what you would like. And then Mark, um, transferring docs from the wiki 
or maybe so, Vlad, do you want to do do a terminology update? That would be another good one. If you'd like to do it, hey, I'm going to do a terminology update and show a, a live terminology update. Yeah, uh, you are talking about this uh, uh, meetup which we are scheduling. Right. Um, yeah. Well, I was thinking um, about uh, doing showing the process of uh, actually building and running Jenkins I.O. site, uh, starting doing make run, make, uh, make build, starting of your local machine, verifying that everything works. And after that, I'm doing uh, like checking if your local uh, fix will work and submitting this issue and pull request, this kind of the entire process. So people who may be new to um, documentation may figure out how to do this. The I reason, like that. The reason for that uh, is um, like some time ago, I guess earlier summer or spring time frame, I uh, created the list of bro broken links inside Jenkins IO documentation. Um, kind of simple, but it, like you know, several hundreds, I guess. And so, somebody uh, started working on that. And after that, another person wanted to work. But eventually, nobody continued working on this. And my guess, they didn't know the entire process, how to uh, it looks simple, like broken link, how to fix, but maybe they should be educated about the entire process, how to approach um, something that you taught uh, me and everybody else uh, at the beginning, um, like one of the first sessions, and it was marvelous job. I like that. That's really great. I like that a lot. Well, uh, 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 do you know uh, when uh, uh, the time of the presentation? Because I, I need to align my off time to we, be available. We, we can do the presentation at whatever time works for us. So if this time works for us, we could just do it during this time. It doesn't have to be convenient for the European. They can, they can mm. watch a recording of it. We can do it any time that works for us. Okay. End time, end day? Uh, yes, absolutely. It's so if I look at calendar, I think my calendar says the 8th of October is a Thursday. So it would probably be the, the typical, we typically prefer things Tuesday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But again, we could say this at this hour of the day and allow people to watch a recording later. Or mm -hmm. we could push it earlier in the day and try to get people live. I'm, I'm open to either. OK. It would likely be the week of October 12, because, or, or we could do it the 9th. Friday the 9th, if we did it morning, it's it's not typical that we get great attendance on a Friday afternoon at a Jenkins online meetup. That would surprise me. Most people want to be doing something different on their Friday afternoon. <laughs> but so, okay. Jonathan. So, so maybe uh, 13 or 14, it's a, a good day to you? Those, those would be very good okay. dates for, for me. Um, would, and I, thinking about it, I suspect the advocacy team will say, hey, if you could do it in the, in the European afternoon, um, North and South America early, earlier morning, that would be better. Would that work for you, Jonathan? And Vlad, could it work for you on the 13th, 14th, or 15th to do a, an earlier in the day? Earlier yes, in the day? Okay, I can handle it. Okay, so so let's let me put a note on that. So October thirteenth, October thirteenth, 
14 or 15 um, early, earlier in the end of European day would be okay. Start of America's day. Okay. Great. Are there other topics we'd like to, to include there? I think we could remind people, and I don't know who wants to do it, but terminology updates. How to do it, how to, and what are some of the pitfalls, some of the uh, problems and things to avoid. Well, maybe this topic is uh, it's a good one to Vlad too, because uh, after the uh, uh, assembly, the uh, local Jinx IO site, Ooh, maybe right. you, you, you show how to do in the next day or the next session. That's, you, that's a very Vlad. good idea. Vlad, would you be willing to, to, after you've shown them how to build locally and use it locally, then say, and now we're going to do a terminology update? Yeah. yeah. Do you want to do this in two separate sessions or just one? I, I would okay. prefer one myself, but go ahead, Jonathan, sorry. I, I, I suggested uh, separate because uh, just maybe the first one uh, big long enough, maybe near to one hour, to handle the house environment. Ah, good point. Yeah, uh, sometimes things go wrong, so you need to fix some uh, on live. <laughs> yeah, very good. Okay. Okay, very good. Sounds so. Good. First session, something like this. Intro, preparing the issues for that for Hacktoberfest. Jonathan, that you present, and then Vlad, building and running the Jenkins I/O site locally, and then a second, a later session, another intro and welcome, terminology updates, and transferring documentation from Wiki. Yeah, I like so, that. Uh, we, as a member of Jenkins, we can uh, participate and uh, earn uh, some t-shirts too, or not? Oh yes, absolutely. I, I yes, you. If the, the the pull requests you submit between October one and October thirty one are absolutely eligible for the Hacktoberfest promotion. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good. Good question. And certainly, I. I have my Hacktoberfest t-shirt from last year. I'm very proud of it. Yeah, I like the shirt too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I think, I think we covered that topic on the Hacktoberfest meetup proposal. So I will submit that today or tomorrow. Anything else on that topic before we go to the next? No. No. Okay, so last topic was plug-in documentation transition, and and this one I think is just a reminder that we 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 need to remind people again, it's it's not hard to convert a plugin from wiki hosted documentation to documentation hosted on GitHub. Anything else we need to discuss today? Mm, uh, just a, a moment, I, I look for a link here uh, to ask a question for you, just a moment. Okay. Uh, the shot 
here. <laughs> I sent the link of, uh, on chat. Okay. I chat window. This oh yes, right. And this one yeah. this one this will this page will take a while to load, but it's a fascinating, a fascinating way to highlight the progress. So it's going to load and show us progress towards the migration of over one thousand Jenkins plugins from wiki documentation to hosting the documentation in GitHub. Yeah, I came across uh, uh, this page yesterday. So it's related to plugin migration or not? It's another... This is absolutely 100% related to plugin migration. This was the original, the original page and process that started us on this. Gavin Mogan created a, this page and has been maintaining and improving it. And in, behind this page is the export tool it will let you mm. input a Confluence wiki URL and get back from it the converted page as either Markdown or ASCII doc. It's, it's okay. a marvelous tool. Okay, so uh, someone of then it's okay and maybe means that it's done, all right? That's so correct. So we need, we need to work on it too or not? Is no. Another team and work on not, Nothing to be done. If it says here that it's okay, then that means it's the documentation has been converted. The pull request has been, or the, the, the pull request was created. The documentation has been converted. The new release of the plugin has been delivered and is now visible on the plugin site. So for an instance, if I click this, I think it will take me to, yes, here's the evidence that this page has been converted. So, and the to-do status, uh, it's point to work available to do. To do, correct. So, so let's, let's go down the list here. So PR, this one says that the plugin has a pull request pending, which would correct it, but has not yet been released with that with that change. So if we look here, you can see the, the pull request has actually been merged, but there has not been a release since this pull request was merged, and therefore it's it's not yet complete. And, and then if uh, we scroll from who is the people responsible to to uh, manage this work? Is it the two or not? The plugin maintainers uh, are the ones who decide if they'll merge a pull request. And Gavin is just extracting this information from, from, the, from the GitHub repositories. So here's actually a quite popular plugin, the XUnit plugin, which apparently has not had even the pull request submitted yet. That, yeah, but that, if you click on the link, uh, it, it already pointed to the jinx.io. So what needs to be done? Ah, so what needs to be done here is yeah. if we look at this palm.xml for this plugin, we look inside of it and we'll see a URL and that URL is pointing to the wiki documentation. That documentation is, is read only. It cannot be changed. And so that's not a place for us to keep documentation long term. So we need to transform this to instead use local documentation that's inside the plugin repository like, well, this, this one doesn't have a readme. So we would need to create a readme that contains this, this content that you see on this page. I get it. And the, the page content actually comes from, if I remember right, this page content couple oh, mistake. Comes from, let's go there, from this location. So if I copy that, open it. Yeah. Oh, whoops. It, it, 
Gavin's, he's already the head direct. Gavin's got Gavin's very smart. He's done the redirect, and so I have to put an extra slash in there to get to the actual wiki page. But this this content needs to be converted to be placed inside that. And a pull request then, and there may be one. That's what I'm a little, nope, there isn't one. Okay, there, this truly is does not have a pull request yet submitted to correct the problem. Yeah, because I, I guess it's this uh, two ways to solve this problem. Change the upon XML or just point the head direct on page. And the both case, you, you go to the right page. Actually, the there's no there's no need to do the problem is not the the redirect because the redirect's already in place, mm -hmm. right? Because if I take this, I take the slash away, it will take me to the plugins page. So the mm -hmm. redirect is already there. It's that the maintainer as a maintainers of this plugin cannot improve that documentation because they can't modify mm -hmm. this page. I, 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 I so the pages document or the plugins documentation is stuck. It will never, never improve. Okay. And there, there is there some, uh, for some uh, feature that uh, capture the content from readme to Jenkins page? There, there is, that's that wiki exporter. So let's go look at that. So this one you see here, I'm going to copy. No, get from the GitHub, GitHub region. Oh, oh yes, that's, that's, that's a standard part of the, of the, um, that's a standard part of this plugins page. It, it uses GitHub's generation of the readme to create this page. Mm, nice. It's because the X unit uh, has no readme, but to show the content in the same way. So someone wants to put them in the hard code, maybe. It's the reason. It's Close. showing content. Close. What happened was that Gavin, this, this, the plugins.jenkins.io site, for the longest time, would copy content from the Jenkins wiki. Oh, and so what? what you're seeing here is it's copy from the Jenkins wiki. And so that at least presents to users something that's useful for the plugin documentation, even if it's not maintainable by the authors and by the maintainers. I see. Okay, so maybe it's a, a, a good uh, next step to work after week migration finish. All issues. Yes, yes, absolutely. There's still, there's still lots of work to be done on the transformation from I put my export card in here on this, right? There are still, well, six percent. Right, I Gavin shows the nice data right up at the top, right? We've got one thousand to do and five hundred complete. Yeah, almost sixty percent. Right. And Mark, this list which Gavin preparing, I guess, dynamically by browsing, uh, retrieving information from GitHub. My understanding this list of plugins includes both adopt uh, already like uh, maintainable maintained plugins and plugins which are for adoption as well. Right? That is correct. This includes all plugins, so it includes uh, all but relatively few plugins. So it includes plugins that are up for adoption, plugins that may have security issues. Plugins. It may even include plugins that we're no longer distributing. I haven't checked for that, but okay. Yes. And, uh, and we have some statistics about the most important plugins to migrate them first or not. That's what this installs column is intended oh. to help us with. Oops, and I just sorted to zero. So what it does is plugins with more installs are higher on the list. And we rely on people to scroll down. And it's, it's quite exciting, actually, to see how well we've done at progressing through these, right? The first time we reach a line that, that has no progress on it, 
is at something with 21,000 installations. And that is less than 10% of the Jenkins install base is using this plugin. So that's, that's quite good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay, thank you for this donation. Thank you. Well, and that's a, that's a fun one to review. That is a really good one to review to show people, hey, there is a lot yet to be done and it's to be done in places that will help many, many people. Uh, even, even a small usage, even on one of these lower usage plugins is still installed at 18,000 locations, right? I, in commercial software, 18,000 was about 17,000 more customers than I had. Exactly, one dollar per each. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's, that's an awful lot that, that are, you can help by assisting with these, with documenting these plugins. So yeah, that's great. All right, well, we've, we've reached our hour. Any other topics before we conclude? No. No. All right, thanks everybody. Okay, thank Re you. Recording Bye. will be posted. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.